Hello and welcome to this mind map session. Today we're going to continue looking at alternative investments and we're going to zero in on private equity funds. We're going to cover strategies used by these funds, their benefits and risks, the fees associated with PE funds, and the investment valuation methodologies and exit strategies that these funds use. Now, the majority of private equity funds invest either in private companies or public companies that they intend to take private. This group is referred to as LBOs or leveraged buyout funds. Some PEs also invest in early stage companies and these are called venture capital funds. And then finally, there are two additional but smaller categories of PE funds, which are known as the developmental capital funds and distressed investment funds. Let's take a closer look at leveraged buyout funds, especially the value creation strategies they employ, their characteristics, and the types of LBOs. Now, in an LBO, the private equity firm seeks to increase the value of the firm through some combination of new management, management incentives, restructuring, cost reduction, or revenue enhancement. LBOs are the most common type of private equity fund investment. The fund's purchase of the portfolio company is primarily through debt. Now this may be bank debt, also known as leveraged debt. It may be high yield bonds or mezzanine financing. One of the key differences between bank debt and high yield bonds is that leveraged loans or bank debt are generally senior secured debt and bonds are unsecured in the case of bankruptcy. As an alternative to high yield bonds, mezzanine financing may also be used. Mezzanine financing refers to debt or preferred shares, and they usually have attached warrants or conversion options. Now being subordinate to both senior and high yield debt, mezzanine financing typically pays a higher coupon rate. Now in addition to interest or dividends, mezzanine financing offers a potential return based on increases in the value of common equity. There are two types of LBOs, management buyouts or MBOs, in which the existing management team is involved in the purchase, and management buy-ins or MBIs, in which an external management team replaces the existing management team. Now, venture capital or VC funds invest in companies in the early stages of their development. The stages range from inception of an idea to the point when the company is about to file an IPO. Note that the companies in which a venture capital fund is invested are referred to as its portfolio companies. And VC fund managers are closely involved in the development of portfolio companies, often sitting on their boards or filling key management roles. The VC fund typically gets an equity interest in the company in which it is investing. The VC fund may also provide some sort of debt financing. Now, depending on the stage of financing, there are three types of investments, formative stage investments, later stage investments, and mezzanine stage investments. Formative stage financing occurs when the company is still in the process of being formed. It further breaks down into three stages. Angel investing is capital provided at the idea stage. The investment funds are used for business plans and assessing market potential. The funding source is usually individuals rather than venture capital firms. Seed stage financing or seed capital generally supports product development and or marketing efforts, including market research. This point is generally the first stage at which VC funds invest. These initial investments are typically through ordinary or convertible preferred shares. Finally, early stage financing or early stage venture capital is provided to companies moving towards operations, but before commercial production and sales have occurred. Later stage financing or expansion venture capital is provided after commercial production and sales have begun, but before an IPO. Investment funds provided at this stage are typically used either for expansion of production or increasing sales through an expanded marketing campaign. Finally, mezzanine stage financing refers to capital provided to prepare to go public. Note that the term mezzanine refers to the timing rather than the type of financing. The timing here refers to the company being in between a private company stage and a public company stage through an IPO. 
Now, developmental capital, also called minority equity investing, earns profits from funding business growth or restructuring. The firms financed may be either private or public. If public, such financing is referred to as pipes or private investment in public equities. Distressed financing involves buying debt of mature companies that are experiencing financial difficulties, such as default or bankruptcy. Again, distressed investing involves investors taking an active role in the turnaround. Distressed debt investors are sometimes referred to as vulture investors. Now let's look at the benefits and risks of private equity funds, talking about returns, diversification benefits, and the risks of PE funds. Now there is evidence that over the last 20 years, PE funds have had returns that are higher on average than overall stock returns. As with hedge fund returns, Private equity returns data may suffer from survivorship and backfill bias, both of which lead to overstated returns. Private equity funds have less than perfect correlation with traditional investment returns, suggesting that there may be portfolio diversification benefits from including this alternative investment type in portfolios. In this regard, it's useful to also note that because portfolio companies are revalued infrequently, the correlations of returns with equity returns may be biased downward. From a risk standpoint, the standard deviation of private equity returns has been higher than the standard deviation of equity index returns, implying greater risk. And again, because of the fact that portfolio companies are not frequently revalued, this standard deviation of returns may have a downward bias. The other risk to keep in mind with regard to private equity funds is that evidence suggests that choosing skilled fund managers is important. There is a statistically significant relationship between the skill of the fund manager and the returns of the fund, and this relationship persists over time. There are again two major components of fees, management fees and incentive fees. The management fees is typically 1 to 3% of committed capital, not invested capital. And of course, committed capital refers to the capital provided by the investors. This capital is drawn down over a period of time, and once drawn down is referred to as invested capital. This drawdown is at the discretion of the fund manager and usually occurs over a 3 to 5 year period. Incentive fees for PE funds are typically 20% of profits, but these fees are not earned until after the fund has returned the investor's initial capital. There is also a clawback provision which requires the manager to return any periodic incentive fees to investors that would result in investors receiving less than 80% of the profits generated by the portfolio as a whole. Finally, let's look at how private equity funds value portfolio companies, as well as some of the exit strategies. Valuation methods for PE portfolio companies is essentially the same as that for publicly traded companies, although the discount rates or multiples used may be different in the case of PE portfolio companies. So we have the market or comparables approach, which uses transaction values of similar companies to estimate these multiples. We can use the discounted cash flow approach or an asset based approach in which either the liquidation values or fair market values of assets can be used. Note that in asset based approaches, liabilities are subtracted so that only the equity portion of the firm's value is being estimated. Typically, the average holding period for companies in private equity portfolios is five years. Exit may occur through a trade sale in which the portfolio company is sold to a competitor or other buyer. Exit may be through an IPO. Exit may occur through recapitalization. In this case, the company issues debt to fund a dividend distribution to the equity holders, that is the private equity fund. Note that this is not an exit and that the fund continues to control the company, but it is often a step toward an exit. 
Exit may occur through a secondary sale, which involves another private equity firm or group of investors. And finally, in the case of an unsuccessful investment, exit may be in the form of a write-off or liquidation. So that wraps up our coverage of private equity funds. I hope that the mind map method improves the efficiency of your preparation, as well as the recall of the material itself. Good luck and see you next time.